a customer coming in and it's gonna uh, do a 36 volt install. We're gonna show you how to do it real quick. These are three of our 110s, the G-Line 110s. They're our most powerful 12 volt offer offering. Um, it packs a lot of punch. Each one of these batteries is the equivalent of a at least a group 20, at least two group 27 lead acids. Um, they are the most powerful uh, compact 12 volt uh, battery on the market. We're going to array these in a 36 volt fashion, and I'm going to show you how to do that. We're also going to pull 24, 26 volts um, for the, the live scope because the live scope can run up to 31 volts recommended. So you want to run your live scope off the 24 volt array and you want to run your trolling motor off the 36 volt array and you can run your displays off one of the 12 volt arrays. And I'm going to show you how to do that really quick. Uh, this is to get all the power off your starting battery. There's too much pressure on the starting batteries. The starting battery is to start your motor. Um, maybe to run a couple accessories, to, but, but to be honest, the way we're running graphs and live scopes and forward-facing sonars, it's just too much for starting batteries. You shouldn't really be running all that stuff off there. You have this asset in the back of your boat that is the equivalent of six 27, group 27 batteries. You have plenty of deep cycle power back here to run all your accessories, and I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. We're going to use the G-Line studs. The G-Line studs have a have a um, threaded portion above it where you can add wires afterwards. So in other words, you can use your battery for multiple purposes uh, and you can add and subtract wires quite easily. I'm going to show you how to do this real quick. It just takes a second. This is a really quick install. It's not that complicated. You got to do it right, but once you see it done once or twice, it's not a big deal. Okay, we're going to stop here and show you that this is the 24 volt, right? So we're going to go ahead and test this because you always should test your voltage coming off. All right, we got 26.3 volts. And for instance, if you're running a 24 volt system and you want, you'd run your live scope off of here, okay, because this is, this is the, the live scope sending unit off of here because you want to run the 24 volts for your live scope to you get a better picture. And then any of your uh, displays that require 12 volts, including your fuse panel, you'd run off of one of these batteries. So these are 13.1 volts, okay? So now we're gonna hook it up to the 36. Just this easy. This is some uh, six gauge wire I had laying around from a hot tub install. Uh, put a hot tub in at my house and had some extra wire and I just use this. You should always solder your connections. These are nice copper connections. Uh, solder those down. They work a lot better than just crimping. Uh, crimping in uh, marine environments is even with those gel crimps is yeah, substandard. All right, so now we're going to get ourselves now we're going to get ourselves a a 36 volt. It's 39.5. That's what we expect. These lithiums run a little hot. Okay, so now you got a 36 volt system here. This guy's going to want to run his live scope. Your maximum recommended voltage going into your live scope unit is 31 volts. So how do we do this? This 36 volt system. Well, we're going to pull off 24 volts. We're going to pull the 24 volts off right here, just like we did on a 24 volt system. So that's 26.3 volts right there. So your live scope is going to come off of here, right? Not off of here because it's 36. It's uh, a 39 is a little too much. It's 39.5 right here. That's a little too much to run your live scope. Um, it's not recommended. So I'm not going to tell you to do that. Guys, do it. But it's 31 volts in the manual, so this is going to do a fine job right here at 26.3. All right, so he's going to run his live scope off here. He's going to run a emergency bilge that is directly linked to a float switch off one of these batteries. So we'll just go ahead and run that off of here, 13.1 volts. He's going to go go ahead and run his displays off one of these. Boom. 13.1 volts, and he's got another battery in case he wants to run something uh, off of this. So what we're going to do is to finish off the install, we take his trolling motor and we put the trolling motor leads underneath here. Okay? So we're going to put the trolling motor leads underneath here. So his trolling motor is coming off right here. And now we put his now we can add our accessories. We, we add our, like I said, our, we add our live scope um, on top of here and you just put a nut down. Boom. 
Boom. And we provide these nuts in the kit. These, nut, these uh, systems come with the studs and they also come with a regular bolt in case you just want to use a regular bolt. And we're going to add our accessories on here with the nuts. That's it. That's all you got to do. It's really simple. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why a lot of the guys that tried the lithium ion drop-ins, the all-in-ones, are going back to using three batteries. Because you can see the flexibility, uh, the difference in the flexibility. First of all, the all-in-ones, most of them are made like 60 amp cells. 60 amps versus 110 amps. This is more than double the battery because you're going to have less cycles and you also have much more capacity. The batteries are protected, so once they get down to about 80%, they tend to shut off. So this 80% threshold of this 110 is a heck of a lot higher than a 50 or 60 amp threshold. All right, that's it, man. Thanks for watching.